person. Now this is real. So happy to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Let's talk about it. I do, I do want the, uh, I forget. Well, I do want the audience to uh, ask a couple questions, but mainly, like, the thing that fascinates me about you is your journey. You know, you've been working with everybody. And we talked backstage about the, like, Spike Lee movies that you did. And I know we're going to get to Mandalorian. I know we'll get to Breaking Bad. He's in a video game, Far Cry 6. Woo! We'll talk about the pop culture stuff. But I want to talk about some of the people like Michael Mann that you worked with coming up as a young actor and what you picked up from there to lend itself, to, to help your longevity, to help you like duck and weave through a career that can be tumultuous and disheartening at times. You know, it's not easy being an actor. When you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I've had some really great opportunities to play some great characters. Uh, you mentioned Michael Mann, who is an absolutely phenomenal filmmaker. Uh, he is an artist, and he started by painting which makes me think a lot about Comic-Cons and all the great artistry that exists here. All the folks in Artist Alley who, um, you know, film is a series of frames, a series of pictures put together. That's how we make television and film. But it all stems from um, artistry, from doing a painting, from doing a cartoon, and putting all that series together to create an idea and a story that's behind it. So I love working with Michael, and I feel like he's very specific in the way he sees things. So, you know, life is a vision. Like, if you wake up in the morning and you go, like, I'm the kind of guy that goes, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this. I may miss a few things in between, but at least the path and the route is planned out in your consciousness. That's kind of how you make TV and film. That's kind of how you envision, you know, coming to a Comic-Con, putting together your Darth Vader costume, right? You think about the pieces that go into doing it. And I, so what I love about Michael Mann is that he has a vision. And if you have a vision, you become a visionary and you're able to work for yourself and do things that you love to do because you're steeped within creation. And that's um, my description of Michael Mann. Very specific in his details. And when you grew up... Rhythm, it's energetic. And so from observing my mother as a singer, everything had motion, movement, and music. My father was a builder. He was a carpenter who worked with his hands. And so I learned from him how to build, how to, essentially, how to create building blocks for your vision, your life, your career, whatever you do. You take it from the very first board and you build upon it until you have the house. So those are the kind of things when you ask me that question, I think about immediately because somehow, even though it wasn't explained to me that way, it's how I've lived my life. Piece by piece, block by block. And there are creatives here in the crowd and I think that as a creative myself, we always think about like that final piece. Like, oh, I'm gonna be in a movie, or I'm going to write that book, or I'm gonna put out the best-selling comic that'll get adapted into a million things in a video game. But we're always thinking about that later. How, working back, like, you're telling me that it's that next step that is the most important, more important than really than that last goal. It's not, you know, I'll, I'll say this because we just lost uh, um, Stephen Sondheim, um, a really wonderful lyricist and um, musician, writer, um, at 90, I think he was 91 years old or 93 years old, and I did a show with him called Merrily We Roll Along. And so I'll say, um, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Okay. And, but you can't look to be finished before you start. And so as a young actor, I, I was around so many actors who just wanted to be famous. Yeah. And, um, and they, some of them succeeded in being famous for this amount of time. <laughs> you know? and, sure. they, and, and then they, they were done with that. It was over for them. So I had that feeling when I was young. I wanted to be, well, look, we're human beings. We want to be recognized. We want to be seen. We want to connect with each other. And the only way to do that is to be in observance first, is to see more than you say. And then say to someone something good, something that would allow them to focus on their confidence, not their weakness. 
So if I'm in the beginning of my journey as a young actor and I, I want all these opportunities, if I'm just looking to be a star, uh, it, it's not going to happen. I fell in love with what I do. And I believe, I mean this, what you do today determines your tomorrow. You want to do something? You've got to do something to get something. That's the only way it works. You want to enrich yourself and strengthen yourself to be able to be an observer and to be able to be acknowledged that you have something inside of you that can contribute? Not a little idea. You know, my little idea never went anywhere. Well, I hear people say that. I had a little idea. There's no little idea anywhere, anyhow, any way. All, any idea is an idea that, that is huge, it's large, it's contributory. It, it's something that will advance you. So for me, every day, I, I, you know, as an actor, you audition a lot. Yes. You gotta go in, you gotta read, you gotta be told no. Thank you very much. Oh, that was good, thank you. Yeah, you'll never see me again, bye. Right? And I realized that I started to hate auditioning until I realized that auditioning it's, I hated it because I wanted to get it, and I was trying to see the end, right? That's what you're talking about. Those are your practice, those are your reps. Now, I, I still go to an audition, even today, they, they want you to read. I don't get upset, I'll go in and read, and I thank them. Thank you for allowing me to do my craft today. develop your love for something and you'll never lose that and it won't matter whether you get the job or not because there's one after it and one after that and one after that. It will happen for you if you realize that what you're creating is a love affair between you and what you do and your craft and that will fill you up and it'll take you as far as you need and want to go. I love it. I love it. And I know we want to talk Mandalorian, I know we want to talk video games, we want to talk this stuff, but I think that this is important for young people to hear, for creatives to hear, and we do have a Mandalorian panel tomorrow at noon, right here, we can also talk a little Mandalorian about, but um, when, I'm, when I'm a professor and I'm telling young students about filmmaking, one of the things that you touched on that I think is really important is, if you're, if you're going to fail, fail spectacularly. You said there's no small dreams, and I think everything, you just go for it, because if you, even if you fail, that is feedback, that is something you won't repeat, but if you are going big, you can get people excited, they will get behind you, and who knows where you might end up, just in case you hit that one out of the park. It's infectious. You, you know, it, there's, no, there's no reason to go small. I know for me, and, and I'm gonna tell you this, because I know probably many of you think of me as in a certain way. A bad guy, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. A bad I'm guy or someone who's confident, someone who's made it. I still get nervous. I still think that my ideas, some of them are small ideas. I still, I sabotage myself before I'm told no. And there, you know, you, I've changed that now, you know? You, you change it because you just start to get open about how you share. This may sound stupid to you, but I believe in it. Right? And tell me if you think this is stupid. And you tell your idea, and then your honest friend is going to say, you know what? Part of it is really stupid. <laughs> but there's a part of it that's really brilliant. Right? And so you're going to get the truth from people who really aren't just there to tell you what you want to hear. So I'm going to tell you, I still get nervous. I get, I'm working on a piece in New York right now for Netflix called Jigsaw. Every day I go in, do I know my lines? Do I know my material? Do I have any new ideas? Am I open to doing it differently? You know, in my world, I want and have to be bulletproof. But it's not until I've done all my homework and I have forgotten about it that I go, now just relax. Because if you don't know it on the day, you better make it up and you better make it believable um, because that's what I do as an actor. So if I can relax, and breathe, I can be more centered in a position to do my work the best and to enjoy it even more than I ever thought I could. The quiet confidence of stoicism from repetition and from just confidence, like a quiet confidence, not a boastful confidence. Yeah, it, 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 for me, it's, it's the confidence is not to impress you or any of you. It's to help me to be calm. <laughs> it's not to show you I'm a badass. No, 
I can't show you that. I have to believe that. And if I believe that I can walk into a room and control the chaos, if I believe that, then I can. If you believe that what you do is contributing to the, the, the bigger circle of what life's about, because I believe that what I do brings joy to some people. I believe that it also pushes some people away when I'm playing a bad guy. I believe that it also allows people to see a part of who they really are. Because when I, when I start to wake up, I go, oh my gosh, I just saw what she just did. I do that all the time. I hate myself for doing that. That was a great example to see what I don't want to be, right? We're all challenged by what we see, hear, feel, and then do within our interaction. And so if you start your day by allowing yourself, here's confidence, today is gonna to be great. I don't feel so hot this morning, but that doesn't matter. My day is gonna be great. Visualizing, speaking verbally, creating what you want your life to be. That's inspired you. Fatherly care. There's a tender part of him that seems contradictory to where he ends up or the things he has to do to maintain his truth, right? How do you balance that and what do you pull from yourself to put into a character like Gus Frank or Moff Gideon who, again, has this tender, like, you care. Whatever you care about, you care about it. In a tender, fatherly way, but you gotta break a couple eggs to make the olive meal. There's no doubt about it. I think that, you know, I really found something when I found how to create Gustavo Fring. I didn't want to play a stereotype. I wanted to play someone who lives next door to all of you. Who, I mean, that was my inspiration. I was inspired from one line that Vince Gilgan wrote called Hiding in Plain Sight. And I started to think about that. And I started to think about my neighbors around me. Do I really know what he does? Do I really know what she does when she goes to work? And I started to think about masks. Like, we all wear masks. We put them on and take them off when we need them. Well, hopefully, you keep them on. Yeah, you keep yours on. Keep them on. <laughs> Keep them on. As but soon as we're off stage, we'll put them back on. The mask of self. You represent yourself a certain way when you're around your parents, when you're around someone who might be able to give you a job or produce your movie. You, you act differently because you want something, right? Yes. So when do we get to a point where we represent ourselves for exactly who we are because there's nothing that we really want or need. We want to collaborate with someone who will be a great collaborator with us. I want to work with people I really like to work with. So when I started to think about this as Gustavo Fring, in the mindset of creating the character, I didn't want to be, you know, I'm half Italian, half black. I didn't want to be the Italian guy with the little poodle, you know, the real nefarious, stereotypical bad guy. I wanted to be human. Why? Because there's half of me that's black and half of me that's white. There's half of me that's good and half of me that's not so good. And, you know, in the thoughts that you think and how you act and how you perceive yourself, that's another mask. Who are you really? And that was my question about Gustavo Frick. Why can't he be concerned and want to take care of his workers in, in Los Cuales Hermanos? Why can't he be a good boss? who is more concerned with teaching you how to do it the right way, how you do anything, how you do anything is how you do everything. Think about it. I gotta put that in my notes. How you do anything is how you do everything. Down to tying your shoes, down, down to saying good morning to yourself when you wake up, down to self-love and self-care. I'm good, I'm good. All of those things are really important because we, in our world, we want it from the outside. But you gotta give it to yourself as a gift from the inside. Otherwise it never works. So with Gus Spring, I gave him the gift of being human, of not trying to take the easy route and play a stereotype, but to play a human being who has both dark and light. And what are we striving to get to? Most of us are striving to get to the light. Some of us spend some time in the dark to work out our personality issues that need to be looked at. Not by Jonathan London. <laughs> you can look at him, you can judge me, you can look at him. But by me. I need to look at that. Right? Honestly.
honesty, integrity, morality. I need to look at it for me because if I keep holding on to that, I'm not going to have a good life. I'm not going to work through the issues I need to work through to be a good actor. I'm not going to be able to create a character honestly if I keep wearing that mask as opposed to this mask. You know, it's hard to lay yourself bare for people to see. But when they see who you really are, guess what? They're probably, more than likely, most guaranteed, will like what they see. Because something that you're giving off will interact with something that's inside of them and it will create this explosionary experience that allows you to see, hey, I can do it too. You can love yourself, be yourself, and be true to yourself. That is alchemy. It's this combination of two disparate chemicals that become, it's one plus one equals three. How's it going, sir? How come should you choose the Terrace at Park Marino? So the Terraces has a very, uh, very unique culture. Um, it's family owned, um, and the uh, it's got a very family feel to it. The staff are like family with the residents, and the residents are like family with the staff and with the family members, and it's really just one big community, and it's. Uh, just the most special place I've worked. I've been doing this for 21 years. This is my favorite building I've ever worked in. Um, and uh, you have to kind of come to see for yourself what it's all about and get the energy and the vibe. It's a very cool place. Uh, how can we uh, contact you or what can you get information for the, uh, the, the Park Marino? Yeah, so you can reach me at 626-798-6753 and I am at extension 303. My name is Sam Baum and I'm the Community Relations Director. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Thank you.